Hey everyone and welcome to another episode about the automated LEGO train container terminal. In this episode we're going to have a look at what kind of motor we're going to use for the vertical movement. And we have two choices that is powered up or uh, with a tachometer with a position system or that is power functions without a positioning system. So I was planning to use the powered up system but something came up. So let's have a look. So what you're seeing here is the test setup that I've been using to get a whole powered up system working. Um, the thing is that you need to communicate wirelessly with the powered up hub to control the uh, taco motors, the motor with a uh, precision feedback system on them. A normal Arduino that I normally use doesn't do that. But I got this Heltec Wi-Fi uh, microcontroller kit and this one actually does communicate with the um, hub. Um, there's another thing and that is this hub runs on batteries. I don't like batteries. I always used fixed power supplies. So I built me something inside this. Instead of batteries, I've connected a, a 12 volt power supply through this uh, wire here that goes to my uh, lab power supply. And I installed a nine volt voltage regulator and that one is connected to the poles that you see here of the hub where normally the batteries will connect. Um, I also installed a additional connector for 12 volt and 9 volt in case I need it then it's around and I can use it. So that makes it a bit versatile. And I can also click it like that and you have a nice little box. Now. Um, Let's have a look at the crane unit. All right, this is the crane right now. And as you can see, I've added some panels to cover the uh, gears up. More are coming along the way. I've been playing around with this unit and I have a powered up motor installed in it. And I used my control hub to control the motor. Um, it turns out that the control hub doesn't remember the exact position of the motor once you turn off the power, once you turn off the control hub. Um, you can see that also when, uh, maybe you've seen that when, you, when you're buying a Technic set with the control hub, um, for example, a car which has steering in it, what you basically see is when you're enabling the control hub of the Technic uh, car, you see that the front wheels, the steering wheels will go a bit to the left, a bit to the right, and then it centers itself. That's the way how it finds its center and that's because when you go to the left it, it blocks at a certain way it goes to the right and it blocks in a certain way and then it knows it's uh, the middle position. I don't have that system here so I cannot use that to define the initial position so I have to do that in another way. Now how, how am I going to do that? I'm going to do that with a switch on top of this unit that moves up and down. And if I position the switch here and it hits the switch, yeah, you can see it, yeah. It hits the switch, then I know that the crane is in the upper position and that will be my starting point. And this is very important because if I shut down the power for some reason, because not this crane, but some other thing is going wrong, a train derailment or whatever, and I need to shut down the power, this crane here, can be in the position of where it is now or it's in the position that it picks up this container or something like that. You don't know the position. So that's why I need to initialize the whole crane once it gets started. So that's why I need a sensor on top or in this way, in this case, a limit switch. Um, but by doing so, I can also use a PF motor. Now, yeah, I said in a previous episode, like a PF motor doesn't work very well uh, with timing and stuff like that. Because if I'm going to use a PF motor, then, for example, to grab this container, I need to, uh, a PF motor doesn't have a uh, precision feedback system. So to grab this container with a PF motor inside here, I need to enable the motor for X seconds until it reaches this position here. Now this is timing and um, that is doable as long as you go once in a while back to the initial position with the limit switch on top. If you do that, 
these kind of distances that you have to move around would work probably fine with the timing. So that's what I'm going to try because the problem is if I'm going to use a control hub in this particular system then I need to, I don't know, have this hub installed on the side or somewhere else, I don't know. It's, it's a big, big thing. And if I don't have it and only a limit switch and, uh, and just motor cables, that's so much easier. And for this kind of positions, I think it'll work fine. When you have positions like uh, when you move the whole crane, and uh, we're, we're talking about here what is it, 30 studs at the most. But when you move the whole crane along the train track, like uh, the red crane, you have a, a lot more distance. And then you'll see that timing is not accurate enough. And then you'll need a powered up motor. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to install a PF motor. I'm going to install a limit switch on top of it. And then we're going to do an endurance test to see that timing inde indeed works perfectly. And I don't need uh, a powered up motor in this system. So I installed a micro switch on top. When the black thing hits the micro switch, the motor is turned off and it works just fine, right? Well, not. Let's see. Let's see. Right. <laughs> I got some more engineering to do. All right, second try or third or last count. You hear that? There's too much force going upward. So that means that I should lower the force, which means I should lower the speed. Um, but then the whole thing becomes less speedy. And that's what I'm looking for. It needs to place the containers at a certain speed. Otherwise it can't keep up with the uh, other red crane that's pulling off containers all the time. Not all the time, but you get my point. So let's try it one more time. Oh boy. <laughs> um, the system doesn't work as good as I was hoping for. I got some engineering to do. Maybe the idea of a micro switch wasn't a good idea. I got another type of micro switch. Let me try that one. All right, I made two changes. One is I got another dipshit here. This is more uh, a normal and switch. I don't know where I got it. I should have like 20 of these. These are, are perfect. I didn't know I had them. I looked around and um, in my closet, which is a total mess regarding electronic uh, stuff. So uh, I found these and uh, which work pretty, pretty nice. They actually are meant for this purpose. Um, next to that, I also optimized the debouncing a bit. And when you're flipping a switch, you always get a bit of, uh, it's not a straight 1 to 0 or 0 to 1, but it, it goes 1 to 0, 0, 1, 0, and then. You know, it's, it, it has a, de a bouncing effect because it's a mechanical switch. You want to filter that out, so you need to have a certain delay before you take action on, uh, on, the, on the signal of the switch. So change that uh, to 10 milliseconds instead of 100, and it's already much better. So let's check it out. Here we go. But there's still a little crack. And there are two things I can do to remove this. So the first way is to actually make the whole system stronger. You don't get the cracking sound again, but the downside of that is that it gets a lot bigger. It gets a lot bulkier. Another way to do it is to go up and then the final piece go a bit slower. You know, but that involves timing again. So I know I don't know if I can make that work or not. So that means like when you're going down for I don't know 1,000 milliseconds. Normally, when you go up, it should be a thousand milliseconds too to get to the to the top. But it isn't because uh, gravity and uh, this has weight, uh, especially with a container on top uh, and pneumatic tubes and so on. So. There's got to be a, a bit of a difference, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure yet how, how to solve this completely. Maybe it was better just to use a uh, sensor. 
but um, with the sensor you don't have a mechanical stop like you have now. It touches the switch, it runs to the switch and that's it, that's its end point. That's what I want. If you want to use a sensor um, without an end point, there could be a difference. Uh, that's my experience. So <laughs> I'm going to engineer a bit further and see if I can make it. some kind of timing to let it go slow, like half a second or something. And uh, let's see if I can get it to work. So I've been thinking. The motor that is in here, I control it with uh, pulse width modulation. And by doing so you can control the speed of the motor. And it was running at a speed of 200, which is uh, 200 of 255 in total. But it's powered at 12 volts. So I did that so I can uh, play you a bit more with, uh, with the speed. So if I just lower the speed in total, and if the crane doesn't become too slow, it's also fine by me. And next to that, also what I forgot to mention is that momentum is also a thing here. And momentum is the amount of mass that is in motion that needs to be stopped. So when you have more mass in motion, it means that you will need more power to actually stop it. So um, that's why I installed a uh, temporary pneumatic system. I grabbed a container and this is uh, about the maximum mass that it should have when going up. So, um, and then I tried to play with the speed of the motor. And the solution was the speed of 100, which is more or less 5 volts. So, when I do it now... Just fine now. It runs a bit slower, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be super speed, you know? This speed is more than enough, because when it's moving up like this, it's also moving, or after this, to the side or whatever. It's fast enough, this is no problem. So problem solved without special stuff going on. This is going to be the system that I'm going to use. So this is the final solution. I'm not going to use a uh, powered up motor. I'm going to use a PF motor in combination with the uh, switch on top, which you have seen. And that's it. So this works fine. I'm going to cover it up, because right now as you can see, there's still a lot of uh, gears visible and stuff. So I'm going to cover it up with some, uh, with some uh, panels that are probably coming in today. And uh, then I can continue with this part moving on a frame. So I can move containers around. So that's going to be exciting. So I've been busy testing the uh, timings that I need for all the containers. And... Um, I do this by actually perform every movement that is possible with this crane. We go first up, then we go down to a certain position, and then we go up to another certain position. For example, this is position 3, and normally if the timing was right, this would fit. Position 3 is 3 containers stacked on top of each other, and the crane is above that. Um, but then I thought, and let me show you, and then I thought I don't need every move that is possible with this uh, layout. Um, what you see here is the positions that I've defined. Uh, position 0 is all the way to the top with the switch enabled. Position 3 is just above the third container. Position 2 is just above the second container. Position 1 is just above the first container. And I made a table for that. These are the positions that the crane is taking off from. And these are the positions that the crane is going to. And by doing so, I can make a little table with all the delays. Or the time that a motor needs to run. Up or down. And you get a table like this. I've done this for an empty crane without a container. And also with a container. Because there is a bit of difference because the weight is different of the crane. Um, then I thought, alright, let's see what kind of movement this crane actually makes. Because as you know, I want to hit that switch on top as a, as a, a reset. So now and then, so I, don't have enough, so I don't have a lot of timings going on. 
and uh, get an offset. So I start at position zero with the switch enabled, then empty, then I go empty from position zero to position one, two or three. Then I grab the container, then I go full with the container from one to two or three to zero. And then um, I move the crane around to another spot and then I go from zero to one to two or three. Going down with the container and then empty again that the crane is going up again after releasing the container on its spot. So that means, and I highlighted it with the blue line, with the blue dots, that means that we can skip off this part of the table, which decreases the uh, amount of timing that I need enormously. So I did, a, I did a lot of work that I shouldn't have done. I'm also glad that this happened because there are differences. So here and there, while I was testing, so now and then, for example, the 700 here, uh, would have been 720 something like that so I don't know if that's gonna be a problem or not um, during the uh, during the phase of testing that we're gonna actually move the containers I'm gonna call it a duration test I got the timings now I'm gonna build a rig that I can move the container a bit uh, back and forth and then uh, we're gonna do a duration test so this is it for today thank you for watching Please consider subscribing to this channel and have also a look at my main channel. Next video we're going to have a look at moving some containers. I'm going to build a temporary uh, thing that we can move the crane around uh, from left to the right. And then we're going to actually move the containers from the left to the right and back. And see if it all works like it should. And if we get the timing right. So see you then. Bye.